King Belshazzar gave a big banquet for a thousand royal guests and drank wine with them. As Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver cups that his ancestor Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. This was so the king, his royal guests, his wives, and his slave women, by the way, there's an orgy going on here too, and his slave women could drink from those cups, and so they brought the gold cups that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem, and, and the king and his royal guests, his wives, and his slave women drank from them. As they were drinking, they praised their gods, which were made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, the fingers of a person's hand appeared and began writing on the plaster wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. Then the king turned pale <laughs> and his thoughts frightened him as if, as if the hand wasn't frightening enough. He's, he's thinking things. Uh, uh, I think he's thinking, boy, I think I had too much to drink. Uh, he, the Bible says his hip joints become loose. I'm guessing that's not the only thing that got loose, if you get my drift. I, I think he, okay, let me explain it then. I think he was so scared that he soiled his royal britches, okay? <laughs> that's just my interpretation. And his, and his knees knocked against each other. The queen, now this would be the queen mother, not Belshazzar's wife, heard of the hysteria among the king and his nobles and came to the banquet hall. She said, don't be upset. Don't sit around looking like ghosts. There is a man in your kingdom who is full of the divine Holy Spirit. <laughs> During your grandfather's time, he was well known for his intellectual brilliance and spiritual wisdom. There was no one quite like him. He could do anything, interpret dreams, solve mysteries, explain puzzles. His name is what? Daniel. Shows up again. His name is Daniel. Have Daniel called in. He'll tell you what's going on here. Daniel says to the king, your kingdom is going to be divided tonight by the Medes and the Persians. And so after Daniel reveals the meaning of the handwriting on the wall, look at what happens in verse 29. Immediately Belshazzar ordered his servants to dress Daniel in a robe of royal purple. purple. <laughs> that was a hard word for me to say this morning. I didn't have enough coffee. <laughs> and to hang a gold chain of... <laughs> I'm still laughing at me trying to say purple. <laughs> And he made him, he made him what? The third, the third in power. He's retired. How about that, retired folks? You get called out of retirement and, and they give you a promotion. So this is the takeaway for us today. How do we, how do we get that, not only the spiritual understanding, how, how do we get that, that brilliance and that intellect that Daniel had? First of all, you've got to make a commitment to learning. You've got to make a commitment to never stop learning. It, it's a commitment. It's a choice. Nobody can make it for you. It's on you. Proverbs 23, 12 says, commit yourself to instruction. Listen carefully to words of knowledge. Thanks. Never, never quit learning. Second, learn from the previous generations. Look at this passage in Job chapter 8. It says, put the question to our ancestors. Study what they learned from their ancestors. For we're newcomers at this with a lot to learn. So why not let the ancients, <laughs> sounds like my grandson. Why not let the ancients teach you, tell you what's what, what's what and instruct you in the way they knew from what? Experience. That's the key word. Experience is the key word. Young people, there's no question you're smarter than me. <laughs> every, every person younger than me, I, I believe, I believe they're, they're smart and I applaud that. But you don't have the experience that this 58-year-old man has had 
Uh, so why not learn from what I've done? Why not learn about F-A-L-E, huh? <laughs> Third, to become wise like Daniel, we've got to maintain a humble attitude that honors God. Why is, why is humility so important? Humility is important because if you're humble, it means you're teachable. Proverbs 15, 33 says, Reverence for the Lord is an education in itself. You must be what? You must be humble before you can ever receive honors. The wisest thing that we can ever do is to humble ourselves before God and reverence Him. The more you honor God with your heart and your mind and your life, the more you get to know this word, I promise you, you'll get wiser. You'll have better understanding. You'll, you'll be, if you'll get, this, get into this book and, and have knowledge of God's word, you'll be wiser in your, your relationships. You'll be wiser in, in handling money. You'll be wiser in problem solving and decision making. You'll be wiser in handling conflict. Amen? Fourth, if you want to be wise, refuse to fill your mind with trash. What are, what are you allowing into your mind? What, what about the pollution that you're watching on your television set? What about the pollution from the books and the magazines you read? What about the pollution that you're coming across as you're Googling and, and, and using the internet? Proverbs 15, 14 says, a wise person is hungry for knowledge while the fool feeds on trash. Finally, if you want to be wise like Daniel, put into practice what you've already learned. Put into practice what you've already learned. In walking and learning from the Lord, here's what I've discovered. I've discovered that God usually doesn't teach me anything new until I've already started putting into practice what I already know, the truth that he's already given me. He shows me one thing, then he waits for me to act on it. Once you act on the first step, he'll take you to the next step. Reminds me of this psalm, Psalm 119, 105. Your word is like a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. In ancient days, obviously, they didn't have flashlights. Uh, so walking at night was a challenge. They had to depend on the moonlight. But some people actually had lamps for their feet. They were little small pots made of clay. They would fill them with olive oil. And then there was a wick made of flax. And it was just enough light as they placed them onto their, tied them to their sandals. It was just enough light for them to see the next step. 